All right, everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Curtsy's Corner. So this week, I want to talk to you about a situation that has been kind of addressed ad nauseum for a few weeks now, a few months, I should say, on this program. But it is the Nate Diaz contract situation and him getting that final fight or farewell fight, if you will, in the UFC. Now, we do have a name. We do have an official fight offer that has been announced out there for UFC 279 at the end of September out there in Las Vegas. And that matchup for Nate Diaz's final contract, final fight on this contract is Boris Hamjat Chmaev. So that, for many of people out there, seems to be a nail in the coffin that the UFC is trying to drive into Nate Diaz's momentum and his exit out of the UFC into free agency. Now, overall, from a business perspective in general, if you look at sports as a whole, typically an organization, whether it's in the big four with team sports to any other situation in an individual sport or campaign, the promotion or the organization that you're leaving isn't going to do much for you to bolster your value if they're not getting something in return, a la free agency. He's walking. They're not getting anything. It's not a trade situation, so they have no incentive to build him up. They only have the incentive really and truly to knock down what that legacy is because they're vindictive at the end of the day. They don't want to see him go make boatloads of cash outside of the UFC. They want him to be codependent on those three letters for him to be able to make those massive paydays. Because at the end of the day, they recognize what the value of Nate Diaz and the superstardom that he brings, the commerce that is brought to everything around Fight Week. It's literally a cult-like situation when you're at a Diaz Fight Week because his fans just follow in droves. I've seen it firsthand out at UFC 241 when he made his comeback and fought against Anthony Pettis and then subsequently made the call out to Jorge Masvidal that night and created the BMF title, if you will. I was there that night in Anaheim and just the atmosphere and the buzz that follows Nate Diaz is unmistakable. And you can make the argument that he is a bigger draw and a bigger star than any current champion right now. If you take a look at the numbers, granted he had the right dance partner in Connor, but if you look at the all-time highest selling pay-per-views, you see Nathan Diaz there multiple times. That is why the UFC does not want to let him walk. They want to see him re-sign. They want to extend his contract. They do not want that Jake Paul fight to happen without them getting some sort of cut from the, the proceeds from the event. But Nate wants to go be his own promoter and make that fight happen with the problem child and go cash out for the biggest payday of his entire career. And with the body of work that Nathan Diaz has had, I believe that he's earned it. He's earned the right to go and at this stage of his career, go have the big money fights that will create generational wealth for his uh, for his posterity and when you look at it just from the raw numbers of what or the raw facts of what Nathan Diaz has done he's been in the UFC for a decade plus now he has fought some of the best of the best along the way he had a legitimate title shot that yes he fell short in the title shot but nonetheless he got there he was the ultimate fighter back in this. So all of these things that you just check, 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 he's beat some of the biggest names in the sport, and above all, he's entertaining, and he is a draw. He's a needle mover, to take the old adage from Dana himself. He is a needle mover. That is why they do not want him to leave. But on the counter to everything, and I don't believe this is something that Nate would do just because that doesn't seem to be a part of his makeup just as a fighter, that dog in him, But I want to present one name to you that does present some relevance in this equation, especially based on Nate is one of the few fighters in the UFC who gets paid a flat rate. The name that I want to offer you is Chris Harper. Most of you probably are not going to be familiar with that name or don't understand the relevance and the significance of that name. However, however, I implore you to look that up 
and to see the exact situation that happened. Chris Harper was a boxer that I believe was back in 2018, made the walk out to the ring, and as soon as the bell rang for the fight to start, boom, boom, taps, walks out of the ring, walks out of the arena, he was done. Did not even engage in the fight, just walked out and created the, uh, you know, basically created the thought that, yep, it's going to happen. And this was over a contract dispute. He was shorted what he believed was, I believe it was like $6,000, somewhere around in there as far as the uh, the payout and the money goes. And he thought that he was disrespected in the process. So his ultimate move to disrespect the promotion in that same respect was to go and tap as soon as the bell started. Again, I don't think that this would be something that Nate would do just because of... He, he's a dog. Nate is a born fighter. He's a fighter's fighter, and that's why he is so beloved within the combat sports community and the mainstream public as a whole. I mean, you have, if you're referenced in Drake songs and some of these other just cultural references, Nate Diaz, or excuse me, in Eminem songs, all of this, you have crossed over and transcended barriers that most of your peers have not. And I think that, uh, I think that Nate will not let himself go out that way as far as the UFC, but crazier things have happened. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let us know. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. That helps us continue to produce this original MMA content and bring it for you every single week. Tune in to the MMA plug presented by DenverSportsBetting.com on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio on Wednesday nights from 6 to 7 p.m. Or live stream at DenverSportsBetting.com slash radio.